Hello again SGBers, I'm Companion Wolf. welcome to another Smile Game Builder tutorial. In this video I'm taking a look at customizing some of the hidden system graphics, notably animated window cursors and game over screens. This tutorial was deferred from its usual Sunday Monday slot because of work and a subsequent rest and recovery that I needed. It was meant to be for the mining part of the crafting system, specifically focused on time doors. That didn't quite work out the way it should have, however, because it worked, then it didn't. Most likely this is because of the way the various triggers interact with one another from within events. I'll continue working on it until I find more viable solution for a future tutorial. So back on topic, we all know about the add assets by now, but the area we're most interested in today is game images. They're as straightforward as they come. Windows includes anything to do with window messages, including the window backgrounds and the select, and even the title cursor. Next is images. Obviously this is where all your in-game images go, including the title screens and the logos. Incidentally, the screen size for SGB is 960 by 544, so these are the max dimensions for full screen images. Icons are exactly that. You can add your own icon sets here, either as full set or individually, but I'd recommend putting them on a single sheet with the prefix icon underscore and then the name of your icon set because sometimes on very rare occasions it can cause conflicts. Dimensions for icon sets are 512 by 512 arranged in a 16 by 16 grid. Each icon is 32 by 32. Battle backgrounds as this tab states are for backgrounds for your battle. Again, these are 960 by 544. But where are things like the message cursor and the game over screens here? This is because you have to create these manually. SGB has a number of hidden graphics that you can customize, but which don't show up in the game's assets images. Before going into that, though, the folder structure is important when saving these hidden customized images for use in your game. So let's have a look. By default, all of SGB's assets are stored in Documents, Smile Boom, SGB, where you have two more folders. Res is for the resources, where all of the default assets are stored and as you can see it has folders for everything from the maps to the windows, images, icons etc etc. RPG on the other hand is where all of your saved projects go by default. Wherever you create a new project and save it you can choose where you want to save it but I usually stick with the default as it makes everything easier in one place when they're bundled together. The first of these images is for the game over screen. The default is rather pedestrian, game over and nothing else, but it's straight to the point. But what if you wanted to liven it up a bit, something more suitable for your game, something customized? In the SGB's resource folder, under system, is where it's located. This is important because since you can't import game over screens directly into SGB via add assets, its structure needs to be the same, otherwise it'll just fall back on these defaults. So when we go into the projects folder, in this case it's unoriginally named new game, we need to first create the folder res 
and then another subfolder called system which is also under rest because remember the structure needs to be kept the same as its defaults for it to work any similarly customized images can be put here let's do a quick play test I set up an auto run event to go directly to the game over screen that's the default so once you've created your game over image as I have done here I placed it under system separate from RES for now. So let's copy it over and then quickly rename it. And now you should be able to see the game o the new game over image when it's play tested again. Uh, so it's corrupted. Why is it corrupted? Because of something that's easily overlooked. I mentioned in a previous tutorial, but I'll reiterate it here. I use GIMP so open it up and then uh, export as again simply overwrite it just check new game res system that's correct replace make sure that the interlacing Adam 7 box is unchecked I'm sure that other graphics programs graphics editors have a similar setting so if the images within SGB appear corrupted make sure there's no interlacing before saving that's the problem so I'll overwrite it and then play test again it should now appear properly like so the next image is equip icons which is used for the various body parts in the character's equipment like so if we edit this in GIMP You can customize it however you want, adding the icons of your choice for neck, ring, helmet, shield, weapon and armor. This isn't very good, it's just something I cobbled together for this tutorial. Each icon is 32 by 32, but I'd recommend a size of between 28 by 28 and 30 by 30, just to allow for the border space. I'm not going to edit this as obviously I've already done it, but instead I will export it into the system folder again uh, like so again making sure interlacing is off
Now that's done. If we play test again to see the changes, they should show up as they're meant to. And there you have it. The final hidden graphic I'd like to cover is message weight. This is the cursor at the bottom of each message window. The default is a flashing wind, flashing arrow. The message window is 64 by 32 in GIMP. I created it's just a simple hand that'll flash in the same way the default cursor does at the bottom of the message. So once again, if it's exported into the system folder, When we play test it again, you can see the hand flashes on and off as it's expected to do. Little customized graphics there. But wait a minute, there are two sections to the message weight, which means it can be animated, right? Indeed, it can. It's a two frame animation that cycles between the two for an animated message weight. This is what I created. Something very simple. Um, <clears throat> back into the resources system and then we'll overwrite it. This is also one that this is also the cursor I'm using for Otherworld SGB. You can't have multiple system images of this. You have to have one <coughs> and they have to be named exactly as it is and they have to be in the resource system subfolder. Play test once again. You can see the cursor animation in action. It's rather cool, isn't it? Thanks to the most recent update, these customized Im hidden images aren't just limited to playtest games anymore. They can now be used in publicly released games as well. You probably already know how to do this, but let's go through the process nevertheless. In game file, you'd create a public game file and select where you want to save it. I'm just using the defaults again. SGB will add a pub at the end of it to, to indicate the public game, but you can change this as you like. Won't bother with an icon, but you can choose one if you want. I'd recommend creating the largest size, 256 by 256, as SGB will scale it down accordingly. Let's now check to see if it's all saved properly. As you can see, there's the executable file for the game. Where are all the resources? This is because they're all compacted and encrypted into data SGB pack. As you can see, it's almost 72 megabytes. Quite a big file. 
Anyway, this is done it this way so that unscrupulous assholes won't easily be able to steal your stuff. So now play testing. And the first thing we see is the animated cursor. And we check the icons. They are right there. And finally, our game over image. And that's it for another tutorial. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos. And don't forget to click on the bell icon next to the subscribe to be informed of when I upload more content. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook where I sometimes put unique content I don't put anywhere else. Or visit the official Smile Game Builder subsite and RPG Maker Times blogs for more updates on various projects and tutorials. That's it for another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.